Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to Dr. Ang Tao Kiong and to all my fellow classmates. Our group consists of six members, Lin Pui Zeng, Nick Arena, Iqmal Danish, Barani Sita, Clara and Jia Yi. Hello, my name is Iqmal Danish and I'm What is definition to partial differential equation. Partial differential equation commonly denoted as differential equation containing partial derivative of the dependent variable which is have one or more dependent variable. A partial differential equation for a function is an equation of the form. Okay, as we can see here, this is one of the example. Okay, next we move to example of partial differential equation. We have five which is dimensional wave equation. Dimensional, dimensional heat equation, dimensional Laplace equation, dimensional wave equation, and dimensional heat equation. Okay, we have two method to solve partial differential equation. First is the Allenberg method. In this assignment, we use method of separation of variable to solve our question. Separation of variable also known as Fourier method. Several method for solving ordinary and partial differential equation in which algebra allow one to rewrite an equation so that each of the two variables occurs on a differential side of equation okay lastly is the application of partial differential equation it is propagation heat or sound free flow elasticity electrostatic electrodynamic and equate hi everyone i'm kota Yi. now let us continue to discuss what is team membrane vibration application in our daily lives Team plates are common appearance in machines and structures. Plate structures form an important class of structure in building, aerospace, and various engineering areas. Team plates can be as small as printed electric circuit boards with micrometers in size and as large as floors in building structures. Natural frequencies are fundamental properties affecting the dynamic behavior of a plate structure. In some cases, these plates may rupture due to resonant vibrations and lead to irreparable damage, resulting in significant loss of properties and even human lives. Thus, it is very important for us to study about the natural frequencies and mode shape of tin plates. As it is mentioned previously that how important natural frequencies are. Let's find the natural frequencies from an object we may deal with in our daily lives. Do you notice that a mouse pad is vibrating when we use them? Consider the boundary condition of the mouse pad where u of x, y, and t equal to zero for x, y on boundary. Next, consider the initial conditions. The size of the rubber flexible mouse pad is 0.2 meter times 0.25 meter with a thickness of 0.03 meter and have an implant tension of 0.5 pound force per inch and a density of 0.002 pound per square inch. Find the natural frequencies of the mouse pad in the first three modes when m equal to n equal to 1, 2, 3. Hi everyone, I am Barney Sita Pandian Bell. I would like to explain about problem solution of derivation of partial differential equation for plate vibration. Before that, we need to have assumption. Firstly, density is uniform, where m is mass per unit area with unit kg per meter square which is constant. Secondly, the membrane is quite flexible. There is no resistance to bending. Thirdly, membrane is fixed along the boundary. Fourthly, tension is uniform and constant where T is tension per unit length with unit newton per meter. Fifthly, out of plane deflections are small in which U bracket X, Y, T are small. Let's see the graph section. The first diagram represents the x and y axis which shows the small area of the plate or rectangular chunk. The second free body diagram shows all forces acting on the small deformed element of the plate during a lateral vibration. The situation satisfies a dynamic equilibrium condition with the summation of all forces present at time t being equal to zero. From the graph, we can know that the horizontal force in which summation of horizontal force equals to t delta y cos beta minus t delta y cos alpha equals to zero due to assumption 5 where the angle is very small so no horizontal motion vertical force summation of vertical force left right equals to t delta y sine beta minus t delta y sine alpha small angle approximate sine theta approximate theta approximate tangent theta so summation of vertical force left right equals to t delta y bracket tangent beta minus tangent alpha. So by using the graph method, we can obtain tangent beta and tangent alpha. 
Submission of vertical force left right equals to T delta Y bracket U subscript X bracket X plus delta X Y1 minus U subscript X bracket X Y2. Submission of vertical force front and back equals to T delta X bracket U subscript Y bracket X1 Y plus delta Y minus U subscript Y bracket X2 Y. X dynamic equilibrium condition where summation of FZ equals to zero. By using Newton's second law of formula in which vertical force equals to mass time acceleration, m delta x delta y, second partial derivative of u with respect to t equals to vertical force, where m is mass over area, delta x delta y is area, and second partial derivative of u with respect to t is acceleration, and by using complete equation of vertical force left right plus vertical force of front back from the previous slide, we can form vertical force equation followed by these steps. Then we obtain second partial derivative of u with respect to t equals to t over m bracket u subscript xx plus u subscript yy. Continuous where c square equals to t over m, c equals to square root t over m. Second partial derivative of u with respect to t equals to c square bracket second partial derivative of u with respect to x plus second partial derivative of u with respect to y is the partial differential equation boundary condition u bracket x y t equals to zero for all x y on boundary where the edge do not deflect initial condition displacement equals to f bracket x y initial condition velocity t bracket x y we need to find deflection in and out in order to satisfy the condition hi i'm jenny so now we're going to talk about step one separations of variables so in step one we have to do two successive separation variables so given that we have the function of u x y t and we have to split these functions equals to two which is first one is this only demanding on the special variable which is f x y and multiply by the gt which is only demanding on the temporal variables next we're going to sub this into the 2d way equations so this triple dot means that um, through various manipulations we're going to get equations of g double dot over c square g equals to 1 over f bracket f x x plus f y y equals to negative new square we have to equate these equations into manipulations constants and uh, it must be in negative because we have to avoid the trivial solutions so with this we can rewrite it into g double dot over c square g equals to negative new square and 1 over f bracket fxx plus fyy bracket equals to negative new square we can rewrite again into a more easiest way where we can insert a lambda where the lambda is equal to c new we can rewrite it which is g double dot plus lambda square g equals to zero and another one is fxx plus f y plus v square f equals to zero we can notice that g double dot plus lambda square g equals to zero is a linear second order of ode and where fxx plus f y plus v square f equals to zero and pde and in the form of two-dimensional helmholtz equations now let's move on to the second separations of variables fxy equals to fxqy we have to sub this into the Helmholtz equations and with that we will get 1 over f d square h over dx square equals to negative 1 over q d square q over dy square plus v square q equals to constant we have to in negative 2 to avoid tribal solution which is negative k square we can rewrite again just same like what we have just did into 1 over f d square f d square h over dx square equals to negative k square and another equation is d square h over dx square plus k square over h equals to zero we can write it in a more easiest way we where we can insert um, an unknown a value which is p square equals to new square minus k square we will get new equation which is negative one over q bracket d square q over dy square plus v square q bracket equals to negative k square and d square q 
over dy squared plus p squared q equals to zero. So now we're going to talk about step two where to find the eigen functions that satisfy the boundary conditions. So in step one, we know that the linear second order ODE solutions, but if we wanted to solve the solution, we can use the homogeneous ODE. And after that, we have to apply the boundary conditions so that we can get two of the constant equations, which is the constant K and P. And by applying the constant equations, we will get a general solutions for it. Now we're going to talk about the solutions of Homer's equations. Um, we know that the function of f m n is the multiplication of h m, the function of h m and q n. So by applying the general solution in it, we can get a brand new equation where its function of f is equal to the lambda of sine n n over a x multiplied by sine n pi over e y, where the lambda is equal to b d. So now by recalling back all the boundary conditions and substitutions or the general solutions, we can get a Homer's equations where which is the partials uh, partial of the equations. We have to recall back the constant that we have stated in step one, which is the new square and the temporal ODE, the separations constant. We know that the lambda is equal to C B. So by substitutions of the separations constant, we can get lambda over C equals to P square plus K square to the power of 1 over 2. Finally, we can get the eigen function of u, x, y, t. And by substituting all the constants and all the solutions that we have stated just now, and where the lambda is equal to 1, and c equals to square root of t over m. Hi, I'm Clara, and next I will explain about the last step and also the solution to our real question, which is to find the natural frequencies of the MOSFET in the first three modes, m equals to n equals to 1, 2, 3. u of x, y, t is equal to sum from m equals to 1 to infinity and from n equals to 1 to infinity of u, m, n of x, y, t. Taking the u, m, n, x, y, t from step 2, we get this. At initial condition t equals to 0, this equation should become u of x, y, 0 equals to this. Let us set k and y as shown here. Substituting k and y into f of x, y, we get f of x, y equals to the summation from m equals 1 to infinity of k and y sine m pi x of a. k and y and a and both x in the coefficient of a Fourier sine series. Insert k and y into a and n and we get this. Now we take the partial derivative of u of x, y, 0, we get g of x, y equals to this. Again, at initial condition t equals to 0, this equation becomes g of x, y equals to b, m, n, lambda, m, n, sine n, pi, x, over a, sine n, pi, y, over b. Setting like the k, m, y before, we then get b, m, n equals to this. u of x, y, t satisfies the boundary condition and also two d wave equation. And now, we know how to calculate the AMN and BMN such that these two also satisfies the initial condition. Now, let us find the natural frequencies of the MOSFET in the first three modes when M equals to N equals to 1, 2, 3. Consider the dimensions of the MOSFET are 0.25 meter times 0.2 meter times 0.03 meter with an implant tension of 0.5 pound force per inch and having density of 0.002 pound per square inch. Convert these dimensions from meter to inch by multiplying them by 39.37 inch per meter and we get these dimensions. To convert 0.5 pound force per inch to pound per inch, we multiply it with g which is 32.2 feet pound per second square pound force multiplied by 12 inch per feet and we get 193.2 pound per second square. Recall the eigenvalue we get in step 2, which is the lambda and n, we will use it to find the natural frequencies in the first three modes. To find c, we will use this formula which is c equals to the square root of t per m, where t is tension and m is mass. Modify the equation and we get c equals to the square root of pg per rho, where pg is the implant tension and rho is the density. Insert the values and we get 310.81 h per square. Now insert the same values a, b, and c into the equation for each modes m equals to n equals to 1 to 3 and we get 158.805 radian per second for the first three modes, 317.609 radian per second for the second mode and 476.413 radian per second for the third mode. 
from the case study we work on, we acknowledge that we can use the separable of variable method to solve the partial differential equation relating to vibration of thin membrane by using the formula. We can also calculate the value of natural frequency of the thin membrane by using Eigen value equation. Natural frequency is one of the crucial properties in any system because it determines its functionality and performance. If the system goes through an excessive frequency or same amount with its own natural frequency, the system will face irreversible damage.